Doodlebud. Enso Pen. Today we're checking out this new model sent to me by Enso Pens. This is his very popular Italia pen model. I'm a big fan of it. This time, again, it's got the primary manipulation for resin, which is made by Jonathan Brooks. Got some flashy gold trim to match the beautiful gold nib. I'll show you some details on this one for sure. But of course, we just got to hit the glam shots in a pen like this. You got some nice shots of the pen. First thing I did when I got it is I immediately pulled out my Enso Puma in primary manipulation for just to see the similarities and the difference. And I could see right out of the gate, the, the resins are very similar, but just a little bit different. The uh, one here on the Puma seems to have a little more sparkle to it versus this batch, which is, you know, it's fine. Uh, you want one more sparkly or less sparkly, but you can just see a little bit of differences. Each one's a little bit more unique. Some have more tones. This has more like blue. This one's got a little bit more purple, so that's kind of neat. Another thing I checked for right away, I pointed this out in the review for the Puma, and it's a little tough to see here, but I did a close-up of the engraving here on the nib, and showed it was a little bit rough. If I find the footage of it I did with the microscope, I'll show it on the screen now, but so the laser energy was a little bit too high and the edges were fairly rough there on the Enso logo. So first thing I did, he said he was gonna fix that. He said, thanks for pointing it out. I will make sure that doesn't happen again. Let's have a look. Look how nice and smooth that is. I almost thought that was actually uh, engraved in there, but it's, it's just so clean now with the laser. So that was tidied up, very well done. Now I do have another Italia pen. This was actually the very first Enso pen that I purchased. This is all in titanium. I've had some fun with it by the looks of it. And you can sort of see this is what you can do with uh, titanium to make it look sort of cool like the resins. Now I really enjoy this pen. Stay tuned. I'm going to be playing with the anodized and coloring again. I also did it right to the nib. It's got a titanium nib and so I did that same type of cool treatment. So I, right away I was comparing the two pens. So I do see a few differences. Uh, mostly sort of a little bit in the section here and then some of the threads as well. But then I had a look into the caps to compare and there's a little detail you can't see right now, but I picked up a new piece of gear just specifically to do this. I've been wanting to do this for a while and just to show you this one little feature in the cap, look at this industrial grade, industrial endoscope, <laughs> $31 and you get industrial strength. I don't think so. Anyways, let's have a look at this thing. Here we are inside the titanium version of the pen. The disc at the bottom I think is machined out of Delrin. It's a bit gouged and scratched up because I've removed it before to, in order uh, to do some uh, anodizing. But here we are in the new model and I believe this is 3D printed, that new disc. So that's pretty neat to see there. It's a very good job, fits in there just perfectly and seals up the pen. And you get this cool kaleidoscope fit, uh, effect with this camera. Check this out. It's like we're traveling through a wormhole. And even crazier is if you point the camera at your uh, phone screen. I don't know. Looks like we're traveling through space and time and some galaxy far away. That worked sort of not too bad. But initial inspection of those major things I had to do immediately when I got the pen. So that was all checked out. The build quality is quite good. Another difference on this version versus his other ones. There we go. Look at the focus is the thread profile. So much different thread. I'll hold up the other ones. The other ones have like an Acme style thread. This is more of a standard style. I believe it's a triple start thread. The uh, cap comes off in one and a quarter turns, which is slightly different if you look at his other uh, pens here. So this is the other Italia. So you can see it has that square thread, that Acme style thread. I think, is this one and a quarter as well? Let's see, one. Oh yeah, one and a quarter. And then the Puma, I think this is just one turn, but same thing. He's usually stuck to an Acme style thread on all of his other pens. This time, switched up to a different thread profile. It comes with a cartridge in the box and also comes supplied with the converter. There's an O-ring to help keep things sealed up nicely. The tension on that O-ring there, the compression is quite nice. 
machining is all good um yeah converter everything's everything's in there quite nice beautiful nib i love these bach gold nibs they just yeah they got a lovely soft feeling to it as well so i've been using it here and i gotta tell you like just like with all those other pens i'm quite happy with it it's very comfortable in the hand it's a nice size it's what i would call like a mid-sized pen i'll do a size comparison so you can see that it's quite light but it does feel nice it does post I worry a little bit with, you know, these pens, just with the resin, they are a little bit delicate, um, you know, to post it. If you just put it on lightly, it does kind of come loose. You actually do have to put a little, mm -mm, a little push on there, which I'm not a huge fan on. This, this resin's quite interesting though. Like it is, it's quite flexible. The wall thickness on this one, it's a little thicker than on the Puma that he did earlier. So you can see, it just looks like the, oh, the focus, there we go. It's a little bit... Actually, I guess it's fairly close. This one just maybe feels, but you can see the resin here. It's It's got some squishiness to it, some bounce, a little bit of elasticity. This is a little bit more solid this time. That could be the wall thickness or just maybe variants batch to batch. But um, yeah, I've been like kind of worried uh, with this pen. Oh, wrong, wrong cap, wrong. There we go. <laughs> wrong cap, wrong pen. I've been always worried with these a little bit with dropping them and stuff like that. But tell me what, they, they do seem actually quite quite strong for such a fancy and pretty uh, looking resin as well but all in all yeah i like it it's very comfortable like i said you can post it if you want but just i worry but it does have some flex to it so it might be okay but just watch out on that don't push too hard on that it's a delicate little pen feels nice in the hand it's quite light it's just a natural writer uh, I absolutely love this pen and the nib on it, so I was curious to see how this is and and sort of same story as well. So let's do a size comparison. I'll give you the you know weights, dimensions, all that stuff. We'll write with it and then give you some closing thoughts. The pens we're comparing, we have an original Leonardo Memento Zero First Edition, a Jinhao X750. Now we got the new Italia, the Puma, both by Enso, Faber-Castell Emotion, Faber-Castell Hexo, and a Lamy LX. Caps off, here we go. So it's a nice mid-size pen, very similar to, like I say, the Leonardo Memento Zero, Jinhao X750, very close to. Don't mind the Zebra G nib that's on there, but standard nib you would have on your pen. But there we go. It's a very light pen. Let's see how much it weighs. What do we got? 17 and three quarter. Yeah, that is light. What's the cap pulling? Six and a quarter. Oh, wow. So that's gonna be like 11 and a half grams in the body. Wow, very light. For actual dimensions like this, it's about 139.3 millimeters. Take off the cap like so, you have 125 and a half. If you post it, it's about 158, the diameter of the pen. The thickest part here on the cap is 100, and, uh, sorry, 15.6, I should say. The section starts off at about 12 and a half, goes down to 11 millimeters, about 25 millimeters long up to the threads, full length until you hit the little tiny stepped up, step up onto the main body. Uh, that full length there is about 29 millimeters. Now it's time to write, so let's get to it. my overall thoughts of this new Enso Italia in primary manipulation number four. Well, it writes absolutely wonderfully. It was perfect out of the box. Everything on here is done exceptionally well. The little nitpick I had last time on this one over here was the engraving on the nib. That's been corrected. So everything is just spot on. The fit and finish, threads, yeah, very, very good job. The fitment on that O-ring, it just compresses it just nicely. So again, if you want, I suppose you could eyedropper this. I'm not the kind of eyedropper person, so uh, I won't be doing that. It just always terrifies me, but it looks like it's ready to go if you want to. Uh, a couple little differences on the regular Italia of the previous model, just to show. So these Greek key uh, features and lines weren't able to get carried over into this. The reason for that is this resin is not is nowhere near what titanium is from a strength perspective. So you wouldn't be able to put those marks into here. 
I don't know if it even maybe would chip around the edges, but either way you would be re removing material and then impacting the wall thickness and you would just be asking for trouble by putting those details on this pen. But uh, a beautiful job nonetheless. It really, really looks nice. Fits great in the hand. Like I said, it writes wonderfully. Um, it's interesting just to see the differences in the resin a little bit from batch to batch. Uh, you know, a little more sparkly on that one versus this one here, but they're both, yeah, they just, it's a very nice resin. It feels very tactile. It's a nice feeling in the hand. It's nice and light. Usually I don't like mega light pens, but I really do enjoy, uh, enjoy both of these that he's done with that. And especially with this latest edition, it's got the clip on here for those clip loving folks. And it's a very nice clip works really well. It looks well with the pen too. Be sure to check out the Enso website for all the details. And as always, thanks for watching. Let's chat down there in the comments, like hit subscribe and we'll catch you next time.